Greetings and welcome to the Mothership. This is AP Calculus in the PM. I'm your host, Mr. Shindelka. We're continuing on with the chain rule, part two, I guess you'd say. And I picked a few of these. Now, these chain rule expressions involve the trig functions. Sine and cos is, actually, all of these are with sine, but the derivative of the sine function is the positive cosine. The derivative of the cosine function is the negative sine function. Okay? For your test on Friday, I'll give you that list, though, with the sine, cos, cosecant, and stuff like that. Okay? For the chapter 3 only. Okay. Find the derivative of each of the following functions. This, well, we'll start with the start. F prime of x. I do the derivative of the outside function. So I'm thinking the derivative of sine function is cosine. I don't care what's on the inside, it stays the same. Now, then you do the derivative of the inside function, and that's 25. Now, since I put it at the end, I'm going to put it in brackets, just less ambiguous. <coughs> You'll find, though, and after you've done these a few times, something like that, you'd probably have the 25 in front of the coast. Okay? You'd probably have it like that. And typically, what I suggest you do, just so that it looks the same as what you're answering, leave a space in front of those, because you know you're going to be putting a number in front of it or something. Okay? Question for that? Inside function, outside function. Now, this one here, C, I picked, it has a different variable, theta, so I'm going to use different notation. Yeah. B. B. Okay, well, let's just do B real quickly. Then. There's no. Is there any composition in this? No. So B f prime of x would be 25 times cos of x. Yeah, that's it. It's just a number multiplying. Since that's a single number multiplying, like it's not a 25x squared or something like that in front. So there's no uh, composition. Now, C, I'm going to use Y. Am I doing dy by dx, though? What's the variable here? D theta. A little difference. It's not that big a deal. Now, I'm going to do this in two steps. So the derivative of the outer function is 3 cos, leave the inside alone, 7 theta. The derivative with respect to theta is just 7. Now, what would you see in your answer book? 21 cos 7 theta, right? Okay. A, B, C, D, E. You see that D is just a variation of what we just did, so I'll skip them. Really, E is just a variation of what we just did, but we'll do it. There's a little more to it. So E, DY, oh no, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. F prime. Nine sine of something is my outer function, so I'm going to think nine cos. This time, I'm going to leave the space in front, by the way. 9 cos. I don't care what's inside. I'm just going to write it down. Now, in front of here, I'm going to just put this in front. The derivative of the inside is 8x cubed. I could put that behind. I don't care. Now, one other thing to tidy things up, right? 9 times 8 on a list of multiple choice questions, you wouldn't see that. Probably you'd see 72x cubed, cosine of 2x to the 4. Right? OK, so I'll leave the algebra later. Like I said, this is the first step. 
But if you were to do a multiple choice question, that wouldn't be a choice. It would probably be 72. So 72 x cubed and then the cosine of 2x to the 4. So, so if you want. I'm just focusing on the first step. How about F? Aha. I'm going to rewrite this just so that you know what we're thinking. I'm going to actually write it out exactly as given. Just to remind us, what does this notation mean? So this is not calculus. This is what I'm thinking. Whether you explicitly write this out, at least think it this way. I suggest you do write this out. Do we all know what this means? Sine, 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 sine four times, right? So sine of 3x, that's what that notation means, right? We see it so often that we don't think about it. And it's usually sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. It's what you've seen in many times. Sine of what? Though? Sine of theta. Sine of 3x in this case. OK. So now I can do calculus a little easier. When you see that exponent notation like this, at least think it this way. I don't, you don't have to rewrite it. I recommend most of you do. But you know if you're prone to making mistakes. So I'm going to write down 4, the derivative of the outer function, right? So I'm going to think of this as 4 something cubed. What is that little something? Is there something inside the sign? Yeah, there's the 3x. I'm, you see how this is, I'm thinking of this as three functions, nested dolls, the Russian dolls here. OK, so now I've done the outer function. Now I'm doing what I'm thinking of as the middle function, the sine function. So times the cosine of, I'm leaving the inside alone. Please follow me on that. One, two, and now three. The third one happens to have the derivative of 3x is 3. Okay. This is just like Shrek, isn't it? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Ogres? This is like, ogres have layers. They're like onions, right? We've got inside, inside. And, yeah. Now, watch Shrek if you need some help with math. <laughs> 12. Now, I'm going to rewrite this probably how you'd find it in your textbook. Sine cubed 3x. Now, I'm going to just set it off with this bracket. Oh. Yes? Yeah, can you explain why? Can you just do it inside? So, like, sine 3x inside the. Okay, just a second here. Which, so, going back to this step, right? Yeah. Red, green, or which one? Which one? Okay, so, well, which part of it, though? You see how this is the outside function, right? This is the middle function. Green is the very inner function. You had to set it apart three times. So you'll have three parts to your answer. Can you do, like, the inside and the derivative? I'm not sure what you mean. I'll just pause for a second. With G, I'm going to rewrite this before I do any calculus. Be very careful with your notation. I am not doing calculus, so this is Y equals still. I'm going to call this outer power half. So I'm going to call this negative 1 half, actually. I'm going to call the sine function the middle function. Inside that, I've got 10x. Three functions, nest. Right? So it's essentially like the previous problem. Yep, things are clicking. dy by dx. So the outer function, I bring down the negative 1 half, subtract 
one, so that's minus three halves. That's arithmetic. I have not changed the inside at all. Don't do it. Now, you don't actually need the brackets around the 10x, but I'm just re-emphasizing composition. Three functions. Yes. You'll, I've never seen root functions with the sign of, like, I've only seen this kind of notation with whole numbers. Root sign three. Oh, within there, like a, if this was cubed inside there, I would move that out immediately and make that negative three halves to start with. Okay, if you had that. Now that's disappearing because we don't, and it really wouldn't be that much more difficult. Now we've only taken care of the outside function. Now on to the green machine. Derivative of the sine is just cos. Leave those innards alone then. Lastly, 10. Now, it's a positive 10. Now, you could group things together. That's, well, actually, you should see what this means. If I drop the colors, I move the numbers with the numbers. 10 and negative 1 half is negative 5. The cosine of 10x is on the numerator. Negative, so that means flip to the bottom. And this would be, I'm going to put this in the square root. Sine of 10x. I left a space here. Because maybe this one I'm going to put the cube inside, because that's probably the way you'd see it. But it's not wrong to have that outside of the square root. Too. But that's what that would be. Okay. There's one from number six. Settings. Before I, I do the calculus on this, I'm going to rewrite this just with color coding so that we kind of got some thought processes here. How about we call this five cotangent as the outer function? Now, the inner function I'm going to call 2x to negative 1. Okay? So, once you have that, I've got two functions involved. Now the cotangent function, you may not remember. I remember that all cotangent functions, though, always have a negative. And then I remember that tan is secant squared, so the cotan is cosecant squared for the derivative. I'm just running through some memory tricks here. So dy by dx is equal to the outside derivative. So I'm putting negative. The 5 was multiplied. Cotangent, cosecant squared. And then the inside remains the same. Whether I want to put 2 over x or 2x to the negative 1, it's the same thing. I'll put 2 over x because that's what we started with. But to do calculus, I find it easier to think of it this way, 2x to the negative 1. Because now I do the derivative of the inside. And I think negative 2, x to the negative 2. And that's really negative 2 over x squared. I probably wouldn't see that in the answer book like that. So you say, well, negative 2 times negative 5 is 10 over x squared. Cosecant squared, I was writing the wrong thing. 2 over x. Okay. That's one way of writing it down. Okay? That's really not tidied up that much, anyways. But first step is really what I'm after. Now, 
finding the slope and then we're done for examples here. And we'll see. I don't know if all of those are necessary. We'll take a look. Find the slope of the tangent line. As soon as I see this, I'm thinking to the power of 5 outside. I might not rewrite it, but that's what I'm thinking, right? To the point where x is equal to pi thirds. OK. Find the slope of the tangent line to that curve. OK. So I just need slope of the tangent. Hey, as soon as I hear that, I think I need the derivative, because that's a formula for the slope of the tangent. So A, I'm doing y equals, well, dy. So my dx is equal to 5. Leave the inside alone, sine of x. I'm going to write it like this, to the power of 4. That's my order function. I'm not using a color blue this time. Then the inner function, the sine of x, cos of x. Then I'm thinking pi thirds, and I, so I draw this. Because you don't have a calculator on a question like this. I'm thinking pi thirds. That's this angle. I'm not going to say what it is in degrees because we don't talk about this. One, two, radical three. Okay. Memorize one, one, radical two, and one, two, radical three. And then you could do any. Anyways. The sine of the pi thirds, oh, I guess I'm going to write down one. dy by dx. When, in this notation, we'd say it like this, x equals pi thirds. It's clunkier notation than the f prime of x. Anyways, 5 times the sine of pi thirds. Sine, so could whatever. Root 3 over 2, right? You got it. So root 3. Or 4. And then the cosine is half. Then it's just arithmetic. So Root 3 times root 3 times root 3 times root 3 is root 3 times, it's 9. Right? Yeah, it is. Don't use a calculator for this, though. Because root 3 times root 3 is 3. Times the other, root 3 times root 3 is 3. OK. You should be able to work these ones out. So that's 9. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So, <coughs> 45, 30 seconds. Forty-five, thirty seconds. That's what I need to say. I'm going to move this up just so that it's I got space for the other part. Okay. I can do that. You guys can. Okay? See, that's how I could tell if the kids used wrenches before. If someone says 45 30 tooths, like, you guys you know how you get a 19 30 second wrench or something like that? Uh, what about B? What is B? I forget. Well, show that the slope of every line tangent to the curve is, oh, wow, is positive. So. How do we do this? I think we need to find the formula for the slope of the tangent line. We call it the derivative. So let's do this derivative. But I'm going to rewrite. What's a better way to think of that function? Negative 3. So I'm going to go with 1 minus 2x. Now I'm trying to show that the slope of the tangent lines are always positive. That means what is the value of the slope always? Greater than zero. It's always positive. Yeah. OK, so let's just take care of this then. Y is equal to, well, negative 3 brought down. Zero. 
it over the inside. Okay, I think it becomes self-explanatory now. Oh, what did I do here? I did put my derivative notation. Half a mark, for sure. 0.5 off. That's me. I caught my own error before I submitted, though. Okay, so six. On the numerator, on the denometer. Dynometer. Now, as a quick discussion here. What do you know about anything to the power of four? It's always positive. It's going to, you can, it's pretty evident there. We won't go into a discussion of how to explain that. We've shown that for now. We'll keep it there. I'll get into how to explain things after. As far as cutting down the assignment, I'm going to do that, but just a second, I'll pause this.